So, Ms. Simwal, I'm the tech lead for uh, the Linaro consumer group here at Linaro, and we work on everything Android at Linaro. So, uh, LCG technic uh, lightning talks are uh, traditionally a set of talks that we have uh, on various uh, different groups and of things that we work on uh, at uh, in the LCG team. Um, I have with me Amit and Yonchin, who are going to be presenting about um, the Linaro dev boards in ASP um, updates, and then an update about how we use uh, an LKFT for Android testing and triaging and other things. So with that, I'll hand over to Amit. Thank you, Sumit. Hello, everyone. My name is Amit. Uh, in this session, I will provide a quick status update of Linaro development boards in AOSP. So as Sumit mentioned, that we do this talk pretty much every Connect now. And this is a follow-up of the last session which we did at last Connect. Here is the link, and here's the link for that session. So uh, I'll start with the build targets that we have added in the AOSP since past year. I'll start with Linaro software rendering user debug build target. It's a generic 64-bit only build target, which boots on, I mean, in, ideally it should have booted on all the devices, but right now we can only test it on Qualcomm platforms, Qualcomm ARM V8 platforms. So right now it's only being tested on uh, RB3 and RB5. But our long-term plan is to make it generic enough to boot on any ARM64 device. As the name suggests, it's a software rendering only target. Uh, it uses something called, something they internally call it as Swangle, maybe. I'm, maybe I'm not pronouncing it right. So it's a GLES, software GLES implementation on top of Swift Shaders Vulkan implementation, which is, again, uh, software. Uh, you won't find this in the launch target because, as I mentioned, it's an experimental build target. And we have primarily used it for uh, AOSP bring up on newer SOCs or pre-silicon SOCs. Uh, another target being added recently is SM8X50, a user debug build target. Uh, it's a 64-bit only generic build target, uh, which targets uh, Qualcomm's ARM V9 dev boards. So that includes 8450, 8550, and 8650. Uh, it boots the UI with software rendering. Uh, while we are waiting for the firmware binaries to land upstream or in uh, Linux firmware Git project. It's a unified build target, as I mentioned. It boots on 8450, 8550, 8, uh, but it is different from the other unified build target which we have, which is DB845C user debug. And the trick here is that upstream do not accept uh, Qualcomm MSM IDs or platform IDs upstream. So we have to add those device tree properties as an overlay during the compile time. Uh, again, uh, it's not something which you can find in the lunch target for now, because we are waiting for the device to reach a usable state where we can uh, have at least GPU and some kind of connectivity working. But we are working on a set of instructions where you can extract the firmware binaries from stock images provided by the board vendor. And then you can ADB sync to the running 8x50 user debug target or manually add those binaries. The support is already there in the sources. So another build target change, or rather a cosmetic change, which we did was on RB5 user debug build target. Uh, so RB5 support is already there in DB845C user debug build target for a very time, for a, for a long time now. And this target was kind of redundant. So we wrote a blog on that some time back. So we thought that it's time now to retire this build target and use DB845C user debug build target to test both DB845C and RB5. Uh, our LKFT builds are already using a DB845C user debug build target, 
to test both the devices. Uh, speaking of LKFT and test runs, uh, we have added support for MMC boot on DB845C. Uh, the primary reason for this target is that our devices are getting old in lab because of the number of tests which we run. So we thought that before we run out of those devices, we need to find a mechanism where we can increase their lab life at least. Not just because they are very expensive, but because they are very hard to come by because of their low supply. We are using U-Boot uh, to automate the testing process. Uh, we, load, uh, we chain load U-Boot from uh, Android from Qualcomm bootloader, and that takes care of flashing, preparing, sorry, uh, preparing the SD card with certain set of uh, partitions and flashing it automatically. So that, at, at least at the lab, we don't have to pull it out and then prepare the images. Uh, we also added support for parallel kernel module loading uh, on DB845C user debug build target. Uh, we are waiting, for, uh, so this is not switched on by default right now. We are waiting for a few successful test runs in the lab before we uh, enable it. Some other notable features include uh, updating to FCM version 7 and API levels and increasing the updating the API levels. We are also uh, following the Mesa Fridreno support because right now we are using Fridreno GLES driver and we want to switch to Vulkan support. Uh, Fridreno's Vulkan implementation is called uh, Turnip. So there are a few patches which are being floating around which supports. So uh, okay. So the problem statement is that Android hardware buffer support is currently missing from Fridreno, Fridreno Vulkan. So we are waiting for that to land before we enable the full Vulkan support. Right now, you can we can switch on the Vulkan support and fall back to uh, Skia GL for hardware UI rendering. And that's exactly what we are doing for 8550, because 8550 or 8450, 8650, they don't have GLES support in Fridreno. Uh, they use Vulkan. So we have to switch to Vulkan. And we used, uh, we switched that, we switched to that Vulkan support with this uh, Skia GL support. Uh, one quick update on this is that I think last week or last to last week, uh, uh, Rob Clark had pulled one, uh, had rebased a set of patches which implements Android hardware buffer support uh, in Fridreno, uh, but we have not tested it yet. So if that works out fine, then we will switch all our devices to Vulkan. Uh, here's the list of work in progress or to-do items which we have. Uh, as I mentioned that, uh, okay, so I forgot to mention that we use uh, uh, upstream fork of uh, U-boot for RB3 and RB5. Uh, we will switch to uh, AOSP U-boot project uh, because it has all the Android goodies which we currently lack in upstream U-boot. Then uh, we have to enable certain features which are specific to uh, API level 33. And finally, uh, we'll, uh, we plan to drop 8450 uh, target, which we had, but uh, it's, no one is apparently using it. And since we already have 86, 8x50 support, which should support 8450 as well. So we will just drop this user debug build target. Uh, now I'll ask Yomkin for the LKFT updates. Thanks, Amit. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yunqin Liu uh, from the Linano Consumer Group. Uh, here I will give an update on the RKFT project, RKFT for Android project. 
the archive key uh, framework is a collection of hardware, uh, of ha software tools and hardware devices. Our uh, archive key for Android includes running uh, the relevant subset of CTS VTS on the nano managed uh, devboss, and uh, we will try triage the results to report and fix the bugs found. Mm, the tests are run on four devices uh, with four five user space, uh, 15 kernel, uh, resulting in a total of 78 combinations on a daily basis. We have run 1.17 billion tests uh, since last year, <coughs> uh, and uh, about 3.44 billion tests uh, since starting. Uh, the, fo so, uh, the following slides are about uh, when GI tools uh, we de uh, developed for our internal use. Uh, this page we uh, is a list of the configurations on uh, what are tested, all the configurations that uh, we tested based on the kernel versions and the OSP versions and the hardware platforms. Uh, the kernel the uh, column lists all the uh, kernel branches from the Android mainland to the 419 stable branch, and the other columns are the OSP version from the OSP main, uh, Android 14, Android 13 uh, to Android 11. And uh, the cells there list uh, all the configurations and uh, uh, the configurations are based on the hardware platform like the RB12 and uh, RB3, DB8 software. There are links and numbers uh, in the page. Mm, with the links there, uh, it, uh, more details about the configurations uh, can be checked. Uh, here are th three examples about uh, the failures, uh, checking the failures across the configurations. The first example is about the failures reported by the same OSP version, uh, but different kernel versions and uh, platforms. Uh, from the example, it can be seen that uh, uh, the failure reported by uh, all the 504, 510, 515 kernels. And there are also some failures only reported by the Hacking 960 by both. The second uh, example is about the failure reported by the same commit, uh, same kernel commit, but different OSP versions and uh, platforms. From the page here, it can be seen that the failures reported by uh, all the, uh, from uh, by the Android 13, Android 14, and iOS main version, also on both the DB843 and the RB5, uh, they both. The third example is about the uh, failures reported by the same configuration, that's uh, the same OSP version, same platform, and the same kernel, uh, kernel branch, but it, um, from different uh, kernel commits. Uh, from the page here, it can be seen that uh, the failure is, re mm, is reported stably for all the last 10 builds. Uh, here, is a, uh, here are some thoughts on uh, bisecting based on the GUI from the GUI perspective. Uh, this, is also, uh, this is best uh, proof of concept currently. Uh, we will discuss the integration with other Linux tools later. Um, first, from the build list, we can see that there is one issue reported by the 6.6.29 version, and the previous 6.6.28 uh, build works uh, as expected. And from the jobs, the test jobs we run, it can be seen that the, re the issue is reported by the uh, CTS RKFT job. Then we can uh, do some bisection. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the idea here is to provide a list uh, of commits between the good commit and the bad commit, and then uh, pro provide uh, the one job, uh, one job, one lava job definition as a template. Then uh, submit uh, jobs for each complete uh, each commit that is selected here. There are some advantages. Uh, so first, we can uh, only see, uh, select the suspicious uh, 
commit that it needed to be uh, selected uh, instead of finally searching all the commits. The second one is that multiple commits uh, could be selected and they will be run uh, in parallel instead of just check one commit each time. Uh, the third one is or the original lava drop definition is provided. You know, we could uh, fine tune as necessary. Like for the CTS job, we can uh, make uh, make it just run one, just run the field test case instead of all the models that we run before uh, building in the original job. And the last one uh, is that the lava jobs will be submitted to Scout. Uh, so that we can utilize many Scout features there. Like from this page, uh, we can see that uh, there is the issue is reported by some, um, by some change in the 6629 merge commit. So next we will start some bisection for the merge commit. Uh, okay, uh, the next one is that about the boot time test. We have this test uh, run for the RKFT project to monitor the uh, improvements and the regressions on for the Android boot time. Uh, both the fresh boot time and the reboot boot time will be collected. Uh, from the data, we will uh, report the uh, kernel boot time, Android boot time, and the total boot time. So that uh, out, uh, the changes uh, on the kernel side and then the, on the user space side could be uh, covered by the test. For the report, the data for the last uh, build will be reported in a table format. And from the table format, we is all be worthy to see if there is any regressions or any improvements there. If there is some changes uh, on the uh, boot time data, we will, uh, Leonardo will uh, investigate uh, it uh, uh, first and uh, report, the, re report the result uh, for, to the relevant owners. Uh, here uh, are some comments rel related to the boot time test we used for the RKFT project. Uh, but here, I'm not going to the details here. So if anyone has any details on it, uh, could they reach out to us? Okay, uh, here are some uh, items we are working on or going to work next um, for the RKFT uh, project side. Uh, the first, like the SD card the setup for the R uh, RKFT project and uh, enable uh, more upgrading test, enable the Hattie plus the Firefox kernel configurations. Uh, also some bisection uh, investigation and the migration to the test suite setup. Mm, for the Hattie plus Firefox kernel configurations, uh, since the, uh, the Hattie device is uh, uh, out of the end of life uh, right now, and it, did not, it was not supported by the Android uh, uh, but not supported by the Firefox kernel yet. Uh, not by the uh, Firefox kernel. And uh, we, uh, but yes, still, uh, the device is still stronger and we, are, we can uh, reuse it and make more of it. So we did some work there and try to see how long we can keep it going. Oh, that's all, thank you. Thanks, Anchin. Thanks, Amit. So, yeah, we are open for any questions. Uh, right after this, we have the Android BOF, where we are going to discuss a few items, and it's a BOF, so if you have things that you'd like to be discussed, we can do that. One slide that's not here, which uh, I thought I'll talk in the BOF, was around uh, 16K paid support. So following Google's guidelines on trying out uh, on uh, dev boards, we have been able to get that to work on the DB845C. Uh, we found some issues with the GPU uh, side of things, so we've, we are working on getting those sorted, but we are able to do a comparative test on uh, software-only build, so 
that's another update that's not here. Um, any questions? Okay, none. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks very much, and uh, we'll see you at the Android buff.